half mortal, half god, all heroes of Olympus. You're listening to Ranking Rick Riordan, a podcast where we rank every book in the Percy Jackson mythological universe. Now let's get into it. I'm Dan. I'm Olga. And I'm Clara. And today we're discussing the Heroes of Olympus book four, The House of Hades. Specifically the rankings that we do. Yes. <laughs> ah, all right. <laughs> Ranking time. Um, <laughs> That's everyone's favorite song. <laughs> Dan, can you make can you make theme music? Yes, for this? I'll do it for, for the ranking. Thank you. Yes, I'll work on that. All right. <laughs> I would like that. Starting with best hero, we have worst to best. Beckendorf, Tyson, Thalia, Jason, Grover, Zoe, Clarice, Nico, Frank, Leo, Piper, Hazel, Annabeth, and Percy. And so we have written here, consider moving Frank and Nico, and also consider adding Raina, Bob, and Coach Hegg. For the record, these these aren't like the worst of every, if, you're, if it's your first time listening. It's not <laughs> the worst in all of the books. It's like the cream of the crop. Yep. Who yeah. make our list. Yep. So. We mean best. Right. Okay, I'm just counting because I know we're going to eventually make this a top 10 list. So right now it cuts off at Grover. So Thalia, Jason, Tyson, and Beckendorf <laughs> won't actually make it on the list. That doesn't make them bad. That's... <laughs> yes. All right. So let's <laughs> Except start with... for Jason. Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with Frank. Where do we, do we want to move Frank up? Yes. Okay, where do you want to put him? Oh, I would put him above Hazel at this point. Yeah, on, uh, under Annabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, on, yeah. I'm on board with that. Do we actually? Do we want to move Leo? Yes. I put Leo above Hazel also Piper? personally. Oh, above. Okay. I I wouldn't put Leo above Hazel. Okay, personally. we can. Put, I think can... Hazel. Let's not forget what she did in in Son of Neptune. I thought that was so good, and her just like okay, yeah. You, you I, can put him between Piper and Hazel. At least for now. All right, and then Nico. Hmm. This is tough. This is actually. hard because, as usual, I love him a lot, but he hasn't had enough yet. Yeah. Like I yeah. really, I the the emotional roller coaster that is that scene with mm. Cupid. Yeah, is an emotional roller coaster more than it is like Nico yeah. doing a hero. Like I mean, it yeah. is, but also you know, like yeah. I mean, here's the thing. This is one of those things where it's difficult. Where. I would personally swap Nico and Hazel. <laughs> I don't feel there yet. <laughs> like I, I, I but, but I'm also like, look at him, his journey from his first book to now. Like he is. That's true. We're talking about best hero, also meaning like most complex character and what Ugh. best handled character. And I think that Nico is better handled than Hazel. I, can't, I don't agree. I, okay. And that's not to insult Nico. It's you just know, to I me agree, that, Dan. Uh, <laughs> But we still would have to split the difference because you also think that Hazel should be above Leo and Piper. So <laughs> um. we could just leave it the no, way it is what? and see what no. happens in the next book. Let's just keep no. Him I want to okay. put Nico above Leo, even with the Calypso stuff. Yeah, yes, Calypso stuff if we are so factoring stuff. in, it's really, 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 really good. But now you're reminding me about my boy growing up from the little kid who played with the little cards and the action figures. Now, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm just really, I mean, I mean, if we're moving him that far, then I want him above Hazel. I'm okay with that. I'm okay what? with it too. Let's move what? him up. Mutiny, <laughs> mutiny on the podcast. I'm also fine with not doing any of this because. Between his chapters, like we know so many things, it's gonna completely change next book. That's what I'm so. trying to say. Is I'm just like, I his journey okay. isn't 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 done. I understand lots of their Nobody journeys says. aren't yeah. done, but I'm just saying that like, it's one thing if someone doesn't get more stuff that d keeps them up high. It's another thing to be like, oh, but I know right, he'll get we're better. We're keeping it as it was. Okay. Okay, but Nico's going to move. He's staying on the time. consider moving list yes. because he will not just be Raina considered. needs to be on this list. Okay, yes. Um I would put Raina above Jason. I would put her above Clarice. Okay, I'm on board with that. I was going to put her above Clarice too. Yeah, I'm on board with that. And Bob, I would put above Raina. I put him between Raina and Nico. Yeah. All right, yeah. what about Coach Hegg? Yeah. Um I'd put him above Clarice. No, no, I don't agree with that. Fine, under Clarice. I don't agree with that. Fine, under Grover. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. I would put Coach Hedge above Jason. Right. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Way we didn't even talk that. about the baby. That was I great. Yeah. That was so good. Cute. Coach Hedge's interaction with Frank was one of the funniest things I've read in this series. And I loved it in, yeah. the, in that scene. It was just like such prime vaudeville comedy somehow <laughs> in a book. I just adored it. I want to say I still think that Grover and Clarice should be swapped. I think Grover had more of an arc than Clarice ever did. But, but I think she's a better, better hero. hero. Okay, she is a dragon slayer. Mm -hmm. All right, so the current yeah. top 10 now is Clarice, Reyna, Bob, Nico, Piper, Leo, Hazel, Frank, Annabeth, Percy. Good list. Hazel I can imagine. Lower. I can imagine this looking pretty different <laughs> in in uh, you know after uh, Blood of Olympus. The hilarious thing to me is Jason is the only one not of the seven to even be in the top ten, <laughs> and like yeah. I don't. It, I feel bad for the guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I'm gonna backpedal a little bit and just say Hazel does deserve to be here for this book as far like she beats basically the both both bad guys at the end yeah so i'll give her that in a really cool way right yeah. like hazel's fighting like i find hazel's fighting style to be mm -hmm. like just really cool she doesn't fight the same way everyone else does and i yeah. like that same with piper yeah. Yeah. yeah all right best god worst to best we have zeus nemesis apollo thanatos pan poseidon hephaestus Aphrodite, Hestia, Mars, Mr. D, Athena, Artemis, Hermes, Hades, and Juno. Uh, up for the auction this night, we have Hecate and Cupid. And also, I don't know if you want to move Mars. I want to move Mars. <laughs> okay. I was I was waiting to say that. Yeah. We did not. This this is a We Stand Frank Jung podcast now, <laughs> and we did not discuss him enough, including during you know just before You're when right. we moved him up during yeah. the hero, like the fact. Guys, like, yeah. come on. <laughs> so, Dan, you brought up an actually, before oh, I like yeah. go into um, my issue. Like, as yeah, a, okay. yeah. So before I go into like how much I love him, because I do love him, yeah. him finding himself, him embracing mm. his, not just his destiny to be a, like <laughs> yeah. a leader, but the fact that he like wants it now, yeah. like him finding that. Yeah. And also the oh. comedy of Mars and Aries in his head fighting, like that was yeah. hilarious and and interesting and surprising and also yeah the reveal that he had been dealing with that all last book i yes. think is really interesting and, too and and uh, yeah. making him actually want to like throw leo off of the ship <laughs> was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay yeah. yeah so all those compliments aside well and i want to say i i echo all of that i think his journey is like the most straightforward the awesome in the whole book um i think making him more and more powerful is just really exciting and fun for that character and how his personality is that being said I personally am not a fan of his physical transformation. Um, and mm -hmm. for people that might disagree, think about it as if this was a story about a female character who wasn't the normal body type for a hero. And then she got the model body type. So let, let's mm -hmm. put it in the se sense of Clarice, frankly. Mm. So she's described early on as kind of like a rugby player type. She's like, kind of start like she she's intimidating physically yeah but that said she's not like conventionally physically attractive in those descriptions mm -hmm. if she was like like if she got the aphrodite treatment yeah. a little bit and people would like praise her for like and like their jaws would drop as what she walked by so yeah. like mm -hmm. that I mean would feel a little bit that being said, it's not like a huge deal to me. And like, like you mentioned, like it's not like he looks like Jason. He does look like a football player. Like he, he looks like a look, linebacker, yeah. which is a very specific. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it's not like it's not like he's supposed to be like Chris Hemsworth all of a sudden. Yeah, and, you know, as Thor. But. Yeah, I don't know. So it just it bothers me a little bit, but it's not a huge deal. His, I mean, it, his journey is awesome, and I still love him. Um, he still has that little fat boy inside yeah. of him. So, <laughs> but. Yeah, and and yeah. So I ever since you said that, I was like, yeah. you know what? You're you're right. Like his validity shouldn't be like linked to how physically attractive it, he is, but it also isn't that. It's just like maybe an unintended consequence the consequence of of that discussion. I mean, I think the idea is supposed to be that his physical appearance changes to match his in, who he always has been internally, and how now he sees himself as as good as he actually is, and now everyone will see that he's that great. 
I, I don't know. It's, but it's that thing of know. equating. Yeah. Equa- it's just, it's food for thought yeah. is kind of what we're getting so at. So what you're saying is Frank should be lower on the list. No. <laughs> I'm just saying that and Rick Nico. kind of maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe Rick kind of screwed up with the physical description a little bit and maybe he shouldn't have done that. But like, you know how Hazel was like, oh yeah, it's cool how powerful mm-hmm. she is, but there's not necessarily as much emotion behind that. Frank is equal parts the emotion behind that and the power and the power and the leadership and yeah, yeah. So like, he's great, agreed yeah. and the, he, oh god he's he has such a everything yeah. and a six-pack no <laughs> yep. i think leo should make a frankenstein joke i think that would it's it's just it's uh, right there you know because he's tall his i mean frank leo's too sad to ever joke again <laughs> until he has calypso in his arms again <laughs> All right, so you wanted to move Mars was where this started. Right. Oh, um, I needed to talk more. I needed to gush more. I still above Hermes where he is. Wow. Okay, you guys, I don't agree with this, what? but if you, I think he should stay where he is. I think he should move above no, Mr. No, no. D. Where? Why is Athena so high up? Because of Minerva, and the whole like struggle but, between her two sides. I mean, and, that's interesting, but it doesn't make her yeah, the but, best. Well, she isn't number one. <laughs> I, and why I would is ask Artemis why is so Artemis high so high up? Yeah, I feel like Artemis yeah. should probably no, no, go no. down. Artemis needs to move. Artemis, Artemis will go above after Hestia. Hestia or like above Hestia. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we move Mars above Mr. D. All right. You don't. So you don't want Mars above? Or do Athena we move then? Mars? We can move Athena underneath Mars and then do nothing else. So where does Mr. Okay. D go? Uh, still above Mars. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yep. Yeah. But we also need to talk about Cupid. And Hecate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that tells us where um, Hecate's going. <laughs> Hecate can go above Nemesis. No, Hecate can go above Apollo. Yeah. I would put her above Nemesis instead. All right. Okay. Fine with that. I would put her below Apollo. Okay. I, mean, I just I, feel like I, Apollo has more of a character. Yeah, I'll give you that. I, I like her opening with Hazel, but mm-hmm. like when she comes back later, it's kind of like... Eh. She's just kind of yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Now Cupid's yeah. an interesting one. Cupid reminds me of Pan and Thanatos and how it's like, yeah. we're awesome for one scene. I Actually, really like Thanatos. I really I would, like Thanatos. I would honestly I... put him above Poseidon. <laughs> Whoa. I think Poseidon should go. Me too. Go. I would yeah. too. Yeah. Below Pan. But I think, I don't know. Okay. I think Poseidon should move to the bottom. Of the no, no. <laughs> that's Zeus's spot through and through. <laughs> <laughs> If we look like we have Thalia third from last and then Jason and then we have Zeus at the bottom. Like this truly is a Hera Juno podcast. <laughs> this is brought to you by Hera. Well, but she likes Jason. So I honestly, I wouldn't be against putting Cupid above. That Bestest, feels right. But... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? He had a big impact. Yeah. Physically and Me otherwise. Too. Yeah, but Hephaestus has. Is so interesting. <laughs> is he? He's, he at least embraces his flaw. Like, I is he? Guys, what? <laughs> Cupid is such a god. Cupid yeah. is such a god. Like, You're, this best is best god. god. He's the and best. Hephaestus is one of them. <laughs> no, he Cupid, belongs in the top Cupid, ten. Cupid knocks him off the list. No, he does not. I will edit this Google Doc <laughs> after everyone's gone to bed. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I will destroy the evidence of this podcast. <laughs> Can we move Artemis? Can we switch Artemis and Cupid? No, what we actually do is get rid of Hestia and put <laughs> Cupid where Hestia is. No, you've okay, got fine, to be fine. Okay, me. Cupid goes at the end after her Festus, <laughs> but we get Hestia out of there completely, out of the top ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. Nobody it's like. They want you to like Hestia. No one likes her. I like Hestia. You don't like her. No one what? likes her. <laughs> this is Hestia erasure. <laughs> All right, our new top what the ten. Hell? <laughs> I did not vote. <laughs> this is not a two-party system. <laughs> it's a coup. <laughs> All right, our new top ten: Cupid, Hephaestus, Aphrodite, Artemis, Athena, Mars, Mr. D, Hermes, Hades, and Juno. Did I read the same book as you people? <laughs> love it. Okay. I love this. I love this list. I love all these lists. Can't wait for can't wait for Nico to be higher, but that's all right. 
I'm, I'm happy for Nico to be higher when he deserves it. Cupid is not going to deserve this. Oh, <laughs> we've, got, we've seen you? most of the gods at this point, so maybe he'll make it. What is wrong with everyone? <laughs> well, then eventually we're going to bring in gods from other books, and then things are going to get spicy. I swear to God, if Cupid stays in that top 10. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Best baddie, worst to best, Cersei, Atlas, Otis and Ephialtes, Kelly, Chryseor, Medea, Dr. Thorne, Medusa, Polyphemus, Phineas, Keone, Ethan, Kronos, Kid, Kid Minos. That's his Western <laughs> cowboy version. I'm going to go back. I'm going to do one more time. One more time. All right. All right. Phineas, Keone, Ethan, Kronos, King Minos, Ar Ar Arachne. Uh, I keep wanting to say Ariadne. Gia and Luke. And on the list here, we have Aklis, Tartarus, um, Pacify, Clitoris, and Kelly. Dan, this is family friendly. <laughs> At just a it's biological an organ. <laughs> Dan, I had already had to mute myself because I was, I was still laughing over Kid Minus. <laughs> and I, I unmuted myself <laughs> the second you said Clitoris. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have a sip of water and calm down. Oh, this has gone off the rails. This is great. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I only want to put Atlas and Tartarus. We good with that? Yeah, I don't feel like Pacify and Clytius really deserve. A a spot they weren't like that intimidating or that interesting and i don't need to move kelly yeah yeah no i'm thinking tartarus goes maybe above phineas that's where i was thinking too i was thinking either above or below phineas i'm also starting to wonder whether king minos is too high i don't think so <laughs> sorry kid minos kid minos <laughs> um and okay, oh my fine. God, that wrecked me. Aklis, I would put maybe above Medea. You'd put her below Doctor Thorne. All right, fine. You can put, put her. Yeah. Why do you like Doctor Thorne so I much? I really. He's French. Um, okay, fine. Let's put Aklis <laughs> above Medusa. <laughs> Are we good with Aklis above yeah. Medusa? <laughs> this yeah. is a very giggly podcast. I Jeez. don't know. What <laughs> French bad guy, that means you're in the top 10 <laughs> automatically. <sighs> so the new top 10 is Polyphemus, Phineas, Tartarus, Keone, Ethan, Kronos, King Minos, Arachne, Gia, and Luke. Yeah. No, we have, a, we have a good top five, I think. Yeah. I thought I was crazy top five lady. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've been resisting I, I, all I this kind of, Part of me wants Keone to be higher on this list. I don't know. I, I could see trading. Back. I could see trading Ethan um, and Keone. Yeah, Keone and Ethan um, trading places might be kind of. Yeah, I could do that. I could also move Kronos down, honestly, because Luke's the cool part of Kronos. That's true. Hmm. Kronos was like tough. Yeah, but he was he smart. Like, Intrigue. He was know. smart. Yeah. All right, I'm cool with this. We yeah. switched Keone and Ethan. I'm not going to read the list again. Okay. All right. Best real world locales. Portland, which is going to fall off the list because that's the number 11. Uh, Alcatraz, Atlanta, St. Louis Arch, Grand Canyon, Hoover Dam, Wolf House Ruins, Smithsonian, Rome, New York City, and Alaska. We nominated Venice and Dalmatia. Ne I will say, not a great book for locations. Yeah. At sea, yeah. somewhere Venice between was good. The, in the Mediterranean. Yeah. All, uh, yeah it, I mean, yeah. if I was going to not just do real world, I mean, Tartarus is the answer here. Right, yeah. Um, but Yeah. What Actually, I meant to mention that when we were doing Best Baddie. Like, think about Tartarus not just being him showing up at the end, but him the whole book. I think he's in a good place uh, being just below Ethan. I feel like him being above Ethan, you know, maybe. Who's to say? Think about it. I... <laughs> I just, I mean, yes, it's interesting that I, it's interesting. You're forgetting Ethan stuff yeah. because the whole thing with him, like betraying Percy when Percy like yeah. tries to save him and him like, yeah, yeah All right, no, fine. there's so much more going All on right, mind fine. territory with Ethan than with just like 
I am all that is evil of the world, and I am... Yeah, yeah like, but I don't know. I get more out of Tartarus than I do out of Kronos in some ways. I mean, I'd be fine I would with, swap Tartarus and Kronos. <laughs> or... I'd be fine with putting Tartarus and Kronos side by side below uh, Ethan and Keone, Wait, but... Yeah, wait. What if we just put Kronos underneath Tartarus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. All right. All right, now I'm going to reread the top sure. 10. All right, so the new top 10 is Polyphemus. Phineas, Kronos, Tartarus, Ethan, Keone, King Minos, Arachne, Gia, and Luke. Okay. So now going back to... Dalmatia. I don't yeah. think Dalmatia should be above no. anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Dalmatia should be above Atlanta. Because they spent a lot of time on Diocletian's palace and the history and the Rome and the Catholics and the blah, blah, blah. And they go underground. Hmm. I would be fine putting it above Alcatraz. Why do we hate Dalmatia so much, guys? I just didn't really actually <laughs> get that much out of it. Like, I didn't mm. really have an easy time picturing Dalmatia or, like, connecting yeah. with it. I, I just felt like it was just, like, a quick pop-in place. Mm. I didn't really feel like it was All exploring right, the geography. Above Alcatraz, then. Yeah. I do, uh, yeah, I, I do, I will say, I feel like one of the reasons I don't remember it as much was because so much happened there mm -hmm. yeah. that, like, the events overshadowed the place. Yeah, I but agree But then, with that. and so I was thinking, like, maybe it should move up then, but but then I was thinking, like, well, but, like, a lot happens in Rome, and I still felt Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, under Atlanta, Venice, do we want to put that anywhere? I got a vibe of Venice. Eh. But not like as much as It was as... a pretty negative vibe, I'll say that much. I mean it's a tourist trap. <laughs> yeah. And and it's Yeah, sinking. it wasn't <laughs> Yeah. I feel like it was just like Venice is sort of it's done enough that it wasn't yeah. like such a notable Let's put it above Portland. Thing. You know what I mean? Like New York City has done a lot. Yeah. But... Okay. He yeah. didn't seem like Rick doesn't like Venice. Yeah. <laughs> he likes New York. Therefore, yeah. I feel different. Which is fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, oh, if we're here, I need to check this off. But whereas Rome yeah. felt like there was a love letter to Rome still in there the way there was to New York, uh, it was just like, oh, well, I can't be in Italy and not, yeah. and not have them go to Venice. Yeah. All right. Top 10. Atlanta, St. Louis Arch, Grand Canyon, Hoover Dam, Wolf House Ruins, Smithsonian, Rome, New York, Alaska. And now, the book ranking, worst to best, Sea of Monsters, Lightning Thief, Titan's Curse, Battle of the Labyrinth, The Son of Neptune, The Lost Hero, The Last Olympian, The Mark of Athena, and Clara wrote The House of Hades. I gave her a thumbs up when you were yeah, I'm, reading. I, I'm on board with that too, honestly. <laughs> I love this yeah. book. It, it, Easy. It, I think it's the best book, yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah, I know we spent a long time criticizing it, but somehow I think this is the least amount of criticisms I've ever had for one of the books. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm I agree. <laughs> picky. Uh, but there's so My many My criticism good was for Jason, not the book. I mean, the thing is that, here's the thing. It's, it's the longest book. Yeah. So there's a there, you're able to have a ton of things you love while still having some things you don't. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It was it was just like a feat in a yeah. lot of ways, mm -hmm. and I could have had it go on for another hundred pages and still felt excited and felt like mm. there was more territory to mind. I like didn't want this adventure to end. Yeah. And. Uh, even with the complaint of it has too many climaxes. I'm like, that's because every character deserves their moment in mm. the sun. Everyone deserves like an emotional impact. And like, I want to serve yeah. all mm. seven of them, even Jason <laughs> and also yeah. Nico and Reyna, but we'll get to her <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. in the next one. So I still think that Percy and Annabeth's best book is Mark of Athena. Um, but that's not to say they're not freaking awesome in this too. Yeah. So it just felt like all of the emotional yeah. like setup of of Mark of Athena just like I got to live in their love for each other in yeah. this book, and that was really nice to read, yeah. even in those awful circumstances for them. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the end of this one, folks. Uh, next time we will be doing Blood of Olympus. Hopefully, we will be back to doing recaps, or maybe people don't need the recaps. Who's to say? I'm excited to reread this one. This is the first book that I've only read once. And Ooh. so there's definitely some, some stuff. And Reina, thank you guys.
and uh, uh, may the gods be ever in your fate. Why are you guys looking at me like that? I'm, I'm just very giggly. <laughs> I was thinking about the Raina. Yeah, that... I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I need good Jason. Yep. May the gods be ever in your favor. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, let's turn the recording. Yeah, on. let's let's put ourselves out of our misery. <laughs> oh, sweet Lord, Nevin. <laughs> what kind of drugs were we? <laughs> I don't think we should be recording at night anymore. <laughs> we're too old. <laughs>